everyone and welcome back to Fundamental Simplify. This is going to be your weekly forecast for the upcoming week starting on the 19th of June 2023. So it's been a wild volatile week on uh, GBP USD. so we'll look into that as well and also we'll uh, do a bit of analysis, analysis on uh, Dick, the Dixie as well and see uh, where price is going as well as look at the GBP USD pair and see what's happening. Um, we can see that this week um, alone, price has already moved around three over 361 pips. So 361 pips is moved uh, this week. So it's been quite volatile. And there were opportunities to make money. I'm sure there was. But um, for me, obviously, if you're a day trader or you're looking to also have a long term position, you also want to see a good, decent pullback to get in on a long term uh, trade. Uh, that could give you possibly uh, to 100 to 200 pips, maybe even 300. Uh, this would have been a great trade at the start of the week, uh, but it was too late in the afternoon for me to even take this trade, but it would have been a brilliant trade. Um, I did explain that in my uh, last video. Um, so if you haven't watched my last midweek analysis video, then do go back go back and watch that. And you can also see, like I've also marked out some of the psychological numbers as well. And you can see how nicely uh, price has respected uh, some of these psychological numbers, starting with the 500, the 600, 700 as well. Um, if you haven't watched my video on psychological numbers, then do go back and watch that because if you did try to implement that uh, that type of strategy with the SMC, then that would have been a, a great confluence as well. So do go back and watch that video. So let's start off with the the, the calendar and see what we have uh, at the start of the uh, this week. Um, I wonder we ain't got really any, any news coming out, but it really does get interesting uh, coming to the end of the week on Thursday where you have the Great British Pounds uh, in bank interest rate coming out as well as the unemployment rate. So what, what happened was last week, if you, if, if, if you go back to last week, um, what happened was that we had the unemployment uh, claim come out uh, on the USD. So as you can see, from uh, you know from 246k uh, we had the unemployment rose to 262k so that's really really uh, high uh, unemployment rate so there's more people that are filing for unemployment so that's really really uh, negative for GDP USD and that's after that that's when we saw a massive uh, uh, bullish move on a GDP USD so uh, we can look at that and then obviously we can go to this upcoming week starting the 19th. Um, I really do think that, you know, um, the unemployment claim will be another thing to look at uh, come end of the week on Thursday. So obviously the uh, ex uh, the forecast is for to, uh, the unemployment cl uh, claim to be at 256,000. But if this is more than the 256,000, then I, I, I anticipate um, bullish movement on GPUSD and bearish movement on the dollar. So do do keep an eye on this as well as uh, the Fed chair chairman uh, Jerome Powell testifies as well. So he might he might say something he might not uh, just to be aware of. Um, but I, I I doubt he will say anything unless he he does say something that's going to be in the favor of the dollar. So we can maybe see some bullish movement. Um, and then end of the week, starting with Friday, obviously if you trade euro, then do be uh, careful of uh, some of these manufacturing PMI coming out from the French uh, from France as well as uh, Germany. Um, then you've got the Great British Pounds where you've got the, their manufacturer, flash manufacturing PMI also coming out as well, as well as the USD as well. So there are quite uh, the uh, volatile, uh, there are quite a uh, high profile red news coming out, but they are more to the end of the week, Thursday and Friday. So do be cautious as well when you're trading uh, GBP USD or Euro USD. So just to just uh, give you guys that, so you guys are aware of what's happening uh, fundamentally and what news are coming out. Now, let's get into uh, the analysis of what I'm looking at uh, on GPUSD this week. But before I look at the four hour, I want to look at the higher time frame, which is uh, the weekly. So we can see, obviously, this week, bullish candle has really, really been bullish and closed as a bullish um, uh, candle. So a continuation candle. So I am anticipating more bullish movement to occur on GPUSD. And another confluence that we get is that we can see that this high on the, uh, the weekly chart has been broken as well. So we've made a new uh, break of structure here. And price of this has gone higher. Now, wh where are we looking for price to obviously come and possibly uh, bounce off on a higher time frame? 
So if you look again, we have this uh, before this uh, bearish movement happened, we had a buy candle. So this could be our order block that we're looking at on a, on the weekly. If I was to also, uh, like I said, this is a sell to buy candle. I've explained this in my last few videos. So do go back and uh, go back and watch those videos if you don't understand why I've uh, put my um, order block here like this. And then if I were to refine uh, this on the daily, I'm just going to refine it a little bit. So this would be like the high time frame. And this is what you want to be looking at. Um, instead of uh, going down to a four hour, it will make your life a lot more easier if you just start with a higher time frame and then work your way down from that. So if I was to refine this weekly order block, I'll be now looking at, so even though I got this uh, set, uh, buy to sell candle as well, which I, I was explaining in a midweek analysis, I'm now going to refine it and just now leave it right here. And this will be a daily order block. So more or less what I'm anticipating is for price now to come into uh, this area and we can see how price reacts off this area. And not only that, but we're also coming into the psychological 3000 as well number as well. So around this area looks like a very good uh, area where price is now uh, moving towards. And then from there, we can see what happens. But we have had uh, quite a few, uh, like we've had uh, five, four bullish days um uh, this this week so next week now if i look at on a four hour we can see that um price is starting to slow down after all the bullish momentum that we've had i think that momentum is now slowing down so i do anticipate that price is now looking to make a pullback how deep that pullback can be i'm not sure but i do anticipate it could be a deeper pullback reason being is because we've got a lot of um open orders as well as um, inefficiency in, in this move that's happened. So we do really, uh, I do anticipate that some of these now inefficiency needs to be filled. And the only way that can be filled is if we get a deeper pullback. But before we do that, let's mark out where our highs and lows will be, our new highs and lows. So if I'm looking at the high time frame of the four hour, this will be the H4 high. And the lowest point of this would be um, right here. I'll just put it here like this. Okay, so we have now the H4 low and we have the H4 high. So in, within this area, um, if we have a pullback and as long as price stays within this region, we can, uh, the deeper the pullback we get, don't get sidetracked or start thinking about um, oh, um, it's, it's, it's a sell market. It will show you uh, lower highs and lower lows, and it will look like a downtrend. But stick to the higher time frame. Higher time frame we are. We know that we've had a weekly bullish close, so we are anticipating more buys. Okay. Uh, also, the daily we have. We're also anticipating buys. We're looking for buys. The four-hour time frame. Every time, whenever we get the pullback, deeper the pullback is a discounted price for us to get in back on the buy. Okay. So always keep that in mind. The deeper the pullback. Don't start thinking about selling, start thinking about where can I get in on the buy. And this is going to help you when I start showing you the areas that we could be possibly looking for. If I go on the 15 minute quickly, I want to just mark out where we can look out for the lows uh, or the highs of the 15 minute. So the, the, the high is more or less on the 15 minute is the same as the high on the four hour time frame. We just want to look at where the low would be. So if we look at where the pullback happened and where the break or structure here, break or structure here. So I mean, you can put your uh, 50 minute low here if you wanted to, or even here is fine as well. So this will be like the 50 minute low we're looking at. Something like this is fine. And uh, it kind of like makes sense. Then what we want to do is we want to look at where, you know, areas that we're looking for price to come back into for us to look for a possible buy opportunity. So I can already see if I, got, I can see this order block here as well, um, this will be like a range sort of a demand area. Uh, but if I was just, just to refine a little bit on the two hours, I would possibly draw my order block like this. So this would be a good area for me to see what price does if it comes into this area. But again, if price breaks below 50 minute, I think 50 minute low, I think if, if we're going to get a deeper pullback, I think this 50 minute low would, is, would break. And then we can get into little cells on the pullback in this area or the 50 minute low. 
look for a pullback to look for a sells but i think once we get into this sort of type of areas we'll start thinking about buying again so just bear that in mind you can still sell it's not a problem but just look for the deeper the pullback start looking for buyers as well now looking at the next area if price does break we've had a break of structure here i would look at this uh four hour order block here I'm just going to go down to a lower time frame just to um, refine it a little bit, which I don't really need to. I think this this area is absolutely fine. So we've been around here as long as it stays above, uh, as, as long as the four, H4 low doesn't break, something around here is absolutely fine to look for a buying opportunity. And even if it doesn't work out, the deeper the pullback, it's better for us because we get a better uh, risk to reward ratio in our trade if, if it does, if you do catch it in the right areas. So I think this is more or less how I would keep it, where you've got the H4 high here, the H4 low, you've got the 15 minute low here, then you've got the order block here. So if we did get a pullback from where price is currently now, okay, so yeah, it's it's not a deep, for me, it's not a deep enough pullback. But again, if we get a deep pullback around here somewhere, this is like over 150 pips. So this really does look like a better area that I would be looking for Um uh, a buying opportunity but we'll have to see how price first plays out at the start of the week this is remember this is just temporary um midweek i do give analysis on um how the marks markets move from the start of the week till the midweek and then obviously adjust some of these areas or some of these levels that i've already uh drawn out for 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 sunday's uh analysis but it can always always change so i would more or less keep it like this i'm really anticipating price to actually go higher and come into the 3000 region and some uh some of the order block i would just refine because it's a weekly big order block what i would do is i've got a uh, i've refined it on the daily to get a um order block but i can also maybe refine this a little bit more just in case it does break higher and breaks above this uh, daily order block then we can look at this four hour order block now why am i looking at this for our order block is because when price started to shoot down it did not come back to it's a it's, a, it's an unmitigated order block for our order block so this also looks like a another good area high probability area for price to come back into now i'm not saying it's going to come there 100 percent, but it's another area to look around for a sell because the weekly order block is quite big so we want to break that order block down a little bit and look for areas because obviously if you look at the weekly it's a big order block so it could be anywhere but if you break that order block down and look at the uh, the daily order block as well as the four hour order block then you know that within this area you're all uh, within this area which is in inside the weekly this could be a good area in this here as well as if it goes above this uh daily and you don't have this four hour order block then you're kind of thinking well where's it going to go now but at least you, if you have a certain area that you're looking at for price to come into at least then it makes your life a lot more easier because now you're saying i've got two areas that i'm looking within this week weekly order block i hope that makes sense so i'll keep it like this more or less and see how price uh plays out um, pullback I, I i do anticipate a pullback to happen based on how big the move has been uh from the start of the week from here all the way here it's about over 360 pips so yeah i do expect a deeper pullback the deeper the pullback is good because then we can look to uh buy uh, and obviously if we do break below i will say the 15 minute then start looking for a little selling opportunity if you did sell it if price broke below the 15 minute low and you were looking to sell and look to sell within this region then yeah it's still a good 100 pip more or less move which is uh, a very good uh, trade and then maybe at the end of the week maybe start looking for a uh, buying opportunity based on the news as well so let's see how this plays out and obviously in the midweek i'll give another update now if we go down to uh the dixie now so we will look at the dollar index now i want to do the analysis on dollar index uh from the beginning now break it down properly so if you look at the de uh, the the week uh, the monthly let's get the monthly so we know that on the monthly we are looking at a bullish move because we can see that price is broken structures here okay so we've got a structure broken here so we know that it's breaker structure we've got uh, prices going higher and then obviously we've been in a downtrend more or less since uh, October 2022 so right now this is more or less a cluster of candles on the monthly which is more or less a range so we know that already so we can look at that a little more a little more uh, in detail on the weekly chart so if you look at the weekly chart 
we know that this would be the high, the weekly high. And the low of that weekly would be here. So now I've more or less um, made my life a lot more easier knowing that I've trapped the market and know that the mount price is mount about bouncing within this high and this low here of the weekly. Then we can go to the daily and start now looking thing, uh, thing, uh, look at things a bit more in detail. So once this high was broken, the breakout structure happened on the daily. Once we've got this, the order block that we're looking at now is this buy to, uh, sell to buy candle right here. This would be for me a, a where I'm seeing price going into and then we can see what happens because obviously price at the moment is bouncing uh, in a range really. Um, so again, come if it goes lower, then you want to look to buy. Unless, until this weekly low doesn't break, you don't look for carry and look for sales. The lower it gets, then obviously you want to keep buying because again, it's in a range. So buy again. If it gets here, you want to sell it again until one of these levels breaks and we see a clean break and a clean candle closer on a daily or a weekly. That's when you know that you get a clear idea of which direction the price wants to go. Either go higher based on the closure of the weekly high or lower based on a weekly or a daily candle closure uh, below the weekly low. Okay, but right now what we're looking at is seeing the daily candle, uh, daily uh, order block right here for price to come into and then look to buy it. So if we're going to buy, then we're going to sell it. So we just have to wait and see how that plays out. I can also see that we had a daily high, which is the highest point here. So we know that these are the uh, key areas that we're looking for. Um, where we're looking for price to get into or once price gets into it then if it breaks above this then again you want to buy but up to the weekly high and that's it we just want to we want to see how price plays out once it gets to the weekly high if it does break above this daily high but again that's about over 100 100 and maybe even 120 pips all right the, so if you go if i come back down to let me just see the the daily a little bit and that's more or less how i, I see the daily at the moment if i go on the weekly uh, on the four hour chart so it's a bit more clearer and clean on the four hour chart. Why? Because we know that right now we want an up trend move and now price is starting to shoot down. We had a break of structure here. And obviously you can see the rest as well. You can see a break of structure here as well. We have a break of structure here. We, we're getting break of structures and we can see break of structures everywhere, right? So we, we are seeing price moving uh, down. So we are in a downtrend, right? Now what we want to do is we just want to just like mark out what we're looking for. So the four hour highs and lows, I would I would say because we had a break of structure here, this would be now your new four hour high. Okay, the low, because now we're getting a pullback, this would be your four hour low right here. Okay, so now what we want to do now is we want to anticipate the price to come into. So the deeper the pullback, so if if, if the Dix is going to make another make a pullback and a deeper pullback, then it kind of makes sense what I was saying on the GU about price coming into this area. Okay, that makes more sense now. If we get deeper pullback on the Dixie, the dollar index, then then we we we're anticipating price to come into this area in the GBP USD pair for us to look for another buying opportunity. Okay, so the deeper pullback, if you look here, this was the order block, but can you see it's kind of been emitted, once it broke, it kind of like mitigated it, touched it, and it's gone now. So maybe within this week here, there's something going on. So if I go down to a lower time frame, we can see that there's nothing there, but on a maybe one hour. Okay, so we've got again this area here that I would want to look around. This area here looks like a very good area or if you want to refine it a little bit like this is absolutely fine. This looks like a good area for price to come into. If price comes into this area, then it looks like a very good area to look for another selling opportunity. Obviously, if price does go lower, then obviously you want to look for a uh, buying opportunity if there is one, but obviously take it with confirmation. I've given uh, quite a few videos on entries and what you're looking for uh, based on entries once it gets into your area of interest. So other than that, really, um, 
um, this is the area that I'm always I'm looking at um, for price to come into even on the 45 minute after break of structure if I were to refine this one hour a little bit um, this is more or less what I'm anticipating really for price to do come into this area a deeper the pullback the better but really I've already marked out the lows uh, the weekly lows the H4 lows the H4 highs daily highs so we've got our areas more or less marked out and we know what we're playing in if you look at the 15 minute the 15 minute doesn't really really look if I'm honest it doesn't look really great if I'm honest with you um, if you were to look at the break of structure here this would be the 15 minute low uh, the 15 minute high would be here so for daily opportunities this is how I would play it out um, so if, if the 15 minute gets broken for example okay so if the 15 minute high gets broken then what you want to do is you want to look for buys based on the 15 minute uh, break of a high and then start looking for buys up until this area here okay that's what you want to do and that's how i would play it out um if the 15 minute high was to break which possibly is going to happen based on the, how uh, how much the dix has fallen as well as how much the uh, great british pan has risen last week so yeah it's just like a 60 61 pick move and then you want to just kind of like wait and see what happens uh once price gets into this area but yeah for a daily opportunity you want to see if price breaks below the four hour if it breaks below then again you've got like it's not a big good trade it's not really a lot but if for daily for a day trading opportunity maybe that this is a good trade but again if the 50 minute high breaks then yeah this looks like a better opportunity for a buy as a day trade um but other than that i think that's more or less how i'm looking at the charts right now uh do like and share and subscribe to my channel if you're new um i believe we're nearly there on 100 subscribers i never really um or, um i would get to 100 when i first started doing this um it's more like a hobby that i do it but again if you do like the content i'm sharing the analysis as well um do uh subscribe to my channel and uh, let's see how far we can grow this uh, channel as well again until midweek next week i'll speak to you all very soon take care